Hello, welcome back everybody. I know it's been a long time since I did a little video here, but I actually wanted to do something for you that I think is actually very helpful. Um, and this is about writing serialized data to a stream and reading it back out, i.e. deserializing it. And uh, I think this is very helpful because unlike writing uh, just kind of like ASCII text to a text file, which you can read back out and print to the screen, when you write as a binary data, you can actually deserialize that object while you're reading in the file and kind of set that binary data back to an object and it's very useful if you have a long running project that um, while it's running you're writing stuff to binary file and then at the end of the project run you can actually call the deserialize method and set those binary data to an object to kind of have some sort of playback functionality which is always nice so without further ado I'm just going to go ahead and create another class over here called serialize data and it's very simple, it's actually not complex at all. So now that we're here, let me just go ahead and create an empty constructor. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to declare a few variables here. Serializable data, what am I doing? Been way too long. Okay, we're just going to create a class variable called stream. We're also going to create another object here from type binary formatter. And don't worry if it's underlined right now because I don't have the actual using namespace declared. So this project doesn't know exactly what I'm writing over here. But if you just right click on it, resolve, and you can just uh, have that using import handled for you right away. And what I'm also going to do here is add another variable called text file name. I'm just going to default it to just an empty string. So uh, within this constructor, I'm also going to just kind of put like a little file name here. And when we initialize this, we're going to set this parameter to this text file name. And uh, now I'm going to also create the stream to start writing data. So let's go stream. I'm going to pass in the text file name. And we're going to initialize the bformatter class. Okay. And we're going to make a simple method here of adding serialized objects and it's going to be of type object because the whole point of this is that your project can actually have multiple class declarations and uh, you just want a simple way to pass it in to uh, write a serialized data. You could create several methods of a serialized object and have the parameter type be the specific object that you created or the specific class but let's do it the simple way here object to serialize and to serialize any of one of your classes that you have in your project is as simple as this bformer dot serialize you will want to pass in the stream that we created and the object to serialize so that would just be this parameter that we created here and that's that for that method I'm going to create another method here to just close the stream So let's just go ahead here and just do that. And it's going to be simply just stream.close. Very simplistic. And what I'm going to do here is create a method to actually deserialize. So we're going to create just a local variable here, object to deserialize. I'm going to initialize it to null. And now we're going to use the stream variable again to actually open the file, but to read it in and not to write like we did the first time around.
Okay, guys, before I get uh, too carried away with this file here, before we, um, I would actually like to create some objects that we're going to actually have to serialize. So, for example, in your project, again, you're going to have a lot of object differ or class declarations uh, with its own class variables, with its own setters and getters. Um, to kind of proceed with this deserialized object, we kind of need to create those objects that we're going to serialize in the first place. So I'm going to create a couple of objects here. They're going to be really simple. Computer object, and I'll make another one called home object. Each of them, I'm just going to put um, just two class variables for each one, so it's not going to be complex at all. But to actually make or declare a class serializable, all you got to do is within brackets above the class name, do serializable and that's that anything now that is declared within your home object class variables will now be serializable and be able to read and write from a binary file so just to save time guys I'm going to pause it right now I'm just going to create a couple of uh, class variables and have the getters and setters set in here and I will show you the file right after I'm done okay so I'll be right back okay guys welcome back I just finished creating this uh, Home object class. As you see here, I just have a, two variables an int your build with its own getter and setter, and I have also another enum type here, which is going to be an enum defining the type of the home single family, town home, or a condo. Um, I actually just realized I forgot to include the getters and setters, so let me go ahead and do that actually. Okay, I have the getters and setters for this uh, home type enum as well. And uh, I'll explain this a little bit later, but I did create another method here called uh, string print content, which basically returns uh, the definition of this instance of this class, the home type, which is going to then print out the actual type that we set it, and same thing with the year built. So I'm going to do this also with another class, guys, and I'm going to pause it again. I'm going to go ahead and first create the class. I'm just going to do another one called computer object. Um, so I think I actually already have it created here. I do. Okay, so let me just go ahead and first kind of declare it as a serializable class. I'm going to pause again, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I have this other object finally defined. I have a PC type as an enum, and then declared an object of this PC type enum. And uh, you can see the entries here is Windows, Linux, and Mac, and then just have another variable called cost. They have its uh, associated getters and setter methods, and I also have this print content just like the home objects. So let's go back to the serialized data object or data class. And what we're going to do here is um, within this while, now that we have the stream open, we're going to start actually reading from the stream itself. And what we're going to do is set it to this local object, object to deserialize. We're going to cast the binary formatter called the deserialize method and we're going to pass in the stream. Simple as that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to have a series of if statements to actually check the type of the object that was passed in. Because right now, um, we didn't actually write anything to the stream, we just declared the methods to do so. But for example, we can create a home object, write that to the stream, then a computer object, and write it to the screen, write it to the stream. And then we can write another computer object multiple times in a row before writing a home object. If that sounds confusing, I'm sorry, but this if statement over here is actually going to help kind of uh, help tell which data data or binary data we're reading and what type of object it actually is. And to do so is we're going to do if the object to deserialize is computer object. This is a very useful technique because if you have again 
different classes stored as a generic object this here can actually tell you if the object read back out is of type whatever class that you have declared in your in your project so we're going to have something similar here for the home object and um, I know in this project here we have two objects only created so it's not really necessary to have um, something this small but when you have multiple objects classes created for your school project or work project then you might have uh, kind of a cascading if else other thing here to see if the object that you just read from the deserialized string stream is of whatever object so once we know that this object to deserialize is of type computer object I'm going to go ahead and create another computer object in here and we're going to cast this object that was written from the stream to that type because we already know that it is of that type already and what we're going to do is write to the console and we're going to write the print content which basically returns a string of the type and the cost of this object and we're going to do the same thing here with this else if there's a home object home we're going to typecast the object to deserialize and do the same thing okay now what we're going to do now is have some code here written inside the catch method and I'm sorry it's not a little bit more elegant but um, you're basically what this wall stream can see you're going to be reading through all of the binary objects written to the file one thing I'm surprised that I haven't been able to figure out is that even once you get to the end of the file this can seek will still return true it'll still return inside this method or within this branch here and um, you'll try to read something when you're already at the very end at which point it actually causes an exception and the exact exception is serialization exception here and um, just to kind of show you exactly what happens I'm just going to go ahead and print out the actual exception message so you guys can see ahead and resolve this and then I'm just going to add one last thing saying that we're at the end of the file okay so now there we have it. We have uh, the serialized class already defined to read and write serialized data. And we have the object that we're going to be serializing and deserializing. Now let's go ahead and create the instance of the serialized data class so we can go ahead and do a demo. Remember, took in a parameter of a file name that we actually want to uh, create. So let's just do test binary file text. And we're going to actually have to create a couple of instances of these objects that we defined already. So let's do home object. We're going to say this instance, this home type is going to be of type condo. And we'll just set the year to 2000. What the hell? Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the computer object. type and the love open source is going to be free. I'm going to go ahead and create one more Let's see. Let's do windows it's going to be a little bit more costlier. Anyway, so now we have three different objects that we created right now. Uh, let me go ahead and call the method serialize object, and we're going to pass in each of these three. We're going to have to make this call three different times. And before I continue on, let me make sure I reference the right object here for the second set method. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and close the stream. Because if you don't, if you recall at this point in the actual constructor, I believe I do open the stream. And then I call the serialized object a few times. And then I want to close this writing stream by calling the close stream. So then that way, when I call this deserialize objects, uh, I'll be able to open up or use the same class variable of type stream to open up the same text file, but in this case to open and to actually parse it. So let me go back to the main method here. I'm closing basically the, the writing stream. Now I'm going to call the deserialize objects, which is going to create another stream to read it in. And at the very end, just to be thorough, let's just close the stream at the very very end. So uh, now without further ado, let me go ahead and actually kind of step through this so you guys can see what's going on. So here we go, stepping through. We're creating a stream. We're creating a text file, test binary file dot text, creating a new instance of the binary formatter class. We're creating a home object here. We're creating another instance, or I should say another class object, computer object. We're creating another instance of this computer object, this time defining as Windows, with the first one we define as Linux. And then we're going to use the serialized object method within the serialized data class that we created. And the first thing we're going to pass in is the home object. And you can see here it's just a generic object here. And it's going to write it to the stream. It's going to do the same thing for the following object that we pass in, which is a car or a computer object. And now we're going to close the stream because we're finished writing. Now we're going to call the deserialize objects, which is going to come in here, open the file name, and we're going to step inside this while. It's going to return the object from the stream. And the first one is going to read in. You can already see here once I'm hovering over it. It's of type home object. That was the very first thing that we actually wrote in. You can see here that it's type condo, which we actually uh, defined. And uh, let's see here. How do I. I know there's a way to actually see the numerical value instead of the actual hex value here. But let's just kind of continue on. So to get to the first, if is the object of type computer object, it is not, is it of type home object, it is, I then cast that object to an instance of a home, and then now I'm going to write to the screen uh, the print content, which is the home type and the year built. So if you look at the actual terminal window here, you'll see there home type condo, year built 2000. Now it's going to go through again, it's going to get the next object. And this time it's going to be of type computer object. So we're going to go inside this if we're going to cast it to computer object, do the same thing. We're going to call this print content. And it's going to print it to the console window. And if you remember, the second object we created was a Linux type and it was uh, basically free. We're going to go one more time. Again, the third thing that we're writing was a computer object, and this is the Windows one. So to get to the print content, it will print it to the line here, and there we go. So now that's the only three things that we actually wrote to the stream here. So this is where I told you that um, because I haven't figured out how to figure, to uh, know when it's actually reached the end of the file. So at this point, it's going to actually hit this and get an exception. There it is. I'm going to print out the exception. End of stream encounter before processing was completed. So I know it's not the elegant way of closing, but at least we have to catch this so the application doesn't crash. So I then print out this is the end of the file. There you go. So now I'm going to just close the stream again, and that's that. And uh, if we actually go inside the project here, we'll be able to see the test binary file text. Once it was actually created, things were written as binary and then as you can see here there's a lot of what looks like garbage characters but it is not. This is a 
the computer object and the home object written as binary. And the deserialized method that we created was able to basically extract the object, the binary data that's written here, and be able to cast it to the actual class object that it was used to write to, and then print its contents. So uh, again, this is something that I hope is useful to a few of you guys. I know this was very useful for me. It was kind of fun learning about this, not knowing before that you can just write objects as binary data and then extract that data right from the file itself and then kind of use that as a playback functionality or method for your project but uh, yeah knowing that I think it's pretty cool so hope this was useful for some of you guys if you have any questions please let me know